Mr. Amster, before you begin, please make sure that you have a sharpened pencil or pen and a highlighter. Notice here on the map, here's Nubia, down here, and that's also known as Kush. Background. The African Kingdom of Kush was located south of Egypt. The kingdom lasted from approximately 2000 BCE to 350 CE, so almost 2350 years. Kush is also known as Nubia. The root of the word Nub is, Egyptian, is an Egyptian word for gold because the Kush was famous for having huge gold mines. The kingdoms of Kush and Egypt had many influences on each other. They lived close together. Just as you and your siblings, although you may not always get along, influenced each other every day. And you and your parents as well. Now, their relationship between the two kingdoms was very complicated. Sometimes they were at peace, but other times they were at war. One would conquer one, then the other would grow and a few generations conquer the other. Kinda sounds like a typical weekend in some households, I'll bet. Please take a moment and highlight 2000 BCE to 350 CE root noob word for gold Egyptian word for gold many influences on each other, relationship, complicated, or very complicated, sometimes peace, other times war. If you need to finish writing, please pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. Kush and Egypt often traded. And as I already said, Kush was very rich with gold mines, hence the name Nubia. Now, Egyptian pharaohs would often send ships to buy, trade, and sometimes they'd even steal gold. Now, the Egyptians traded grain, beer, and linen for the Kush's gold, ivory, leather, timber. Does anybody remember what kind of wood would be in Kush? If you said ebony wood, you're correct. E-B-O-N-Y. And they would get slaves. But remember, we don't look at slaves in the same way that they would look at slaves. Their slaves would be prisoners of war or people that owned a debt. Oops. Please take a moment and highlight traded often, rich with gold mines, sent ships, buy, trade, and even steal, traded beer, grain, linen, for Cush's uh, gold, ivory, leather, timber, and slaves. Egypt conquers Cush. During the New Kingdom, Egypt conquered Cush and forced them to pay tribute. 
Does anybody remember what tribute means? They had to pay homage. They had to pay uh, Egypt because they were conquered by them. The Egyptian pharaoh appointed a governor to collect this tribute in form of gold, cattle, ivory, ebony wood, ostrich feathers, and slaves. It's almost like a tax, so to speak. And under Egypt's authority, Cushites, notice the spelling, citizens of Cush, spoke and wrote in Egyptian. They worshipped Egyptian gods and goddesses. They wore Egyptian-style clothing. Cush's military fought in Egypt's army. And Cush's royalty was sent to Egypt to receive an education. This is not uncommon. When people, when European powers controlled many of the Asian cultures and African cultures uh, around the world right after World War II, it was not uncommon for them to send theirs to either France, to England, to the United States to get an education so they could learn. Please take a moment and highlight New Kingdom, Egypt conquers Kush, forced pay tribute, governor collect tribute, and then highlight under Egyptian control and with your highlighter circle these things. If you are all done, we'll move on, but if not, pause the video and finish up what you need to do. Cush regains independence. When Egypt's new kingdom collapses, Cush regains independence in approximately 1075 BCE. But the Egyptian culture still remained in Cush. Please highlight New Kingdom collapses approximately 1075 BCE. And culture remained. After the New Kingdom, Egypt's, cult Egypt's government was in chaos with many groups fighting over power. Kind of like when two siblings are left alone and for the par when the parents go away for dinner and there's a little bit of a power struggle. This created a weak and unstable Egypt. And then, Cush invaded Egypt in the mid-700 BCE. In 730 BCE, Egypt surrendered to Cush's king, Pai. Here's a picture of that taking place. And the Egyptians had to honor King Pai for all of his, grand, his greatness. Please take a moment and highlight... Cush invaded Egypt, mid-700s BCE, 730 BCE, surrendered to King Pai. If you are not all done, please pause the video. Otherwise, let's keep going. Continuation of Cush Conquers Egypt. King Pai declares himself Pharaoh and the uniter of two lands, the name that was often given to the Pharaoh of Egypt.
This became the 25th dynasty in ancient Egypt. Cush's goal was to revive Egypt's past glory. They did this by building elaborate temples, monuments, and pyramids, both in Egypt and in Cush. But they added their own little spice to it to make it much more Cush-like. Please take a moment and highlight King Pai, uniter of two lands, 25th dynasty, revive Egypt's past glory, and then built. If you are not all done, please pause the video. Otherwise, let's keep going. Cushites, under pressure, the Assyrians. Remember them? They put pressure on the Cushites in the hope of conquering Egypt. Here's them over here. The Assyrians had iron weapons, remember that, which were more advanced than the Cushite weapons, which were still bronze. When the Assyrians invaded Egypt in 671 BCE, the Cushites tried to regain control, but ultimately they were defeated. By the mid-650s BCE, the last of the Cushite pharaohs had left Egypt and returned to Cush. Please take a moment and highlight Assyrians had iron weapons, more advanced than Cush. Mid-650s, last Cushite pharaoh left Egypt. Moreau. That became the capital of Cush in about 590 BCE. After an Egyptian invasion destroyed their capital city. Moreau became an important trading city. Traders could use the Nile River, the Red Sea, and land routes to transport goods. Sounds like a caravan trip to me. The many transportation routes allowed them to trade with many civilizations. They traded with other countries and civilizations within Africa, and the nearby Middle East. They also traded with faraway lands like Rome, India, and China. Please take a moment and highlight Meroe, capital of Kush, important trading city, Let's move on. Achievements. With the new capital of Meroe, Cush was able to access iron deposits and produce iron. Take that, Assyrians. They also made charcoal. Iron weapons Iron workers made such weapons as spears, arrows, swords, axes, hoes, and other various farming tools. Advancements in iron made farming even easier than when bronze was used, and made Kush much more of a military threat to its neighbors. If you look down here, here's an example of an iron dagger.
Notice the ebony wood handle and then the iron. Oops, there's the bell, but we're going to keep going. Please take a moment, by the way, and highlight able, uh, able to access iron, produce iron, made charcoal, advancements in iron, farming easier, more of a military threat. Kush culture revived. After losing power to Egypt, Kush eventually tried to regain its culture. Kushites no longer worshipped Egyptian gods, but instead they worshipped a lion-headed god. They adopted their own language called Marotic. Here is the lion-headed the lion god who is the god of war and victory. Please take a moment and highlight Kush revived culture, worshipped a lion-headed god, language of Marotic. I know you're tired. We're almost there. One more slide. Kush culture revived. Kush was ruled by Kandakes, or queen mothers. These were female rulers, and they were considered to be goddesses in human form. Usually, they co-ruled Egypt or Kush with their husbands or sons. Queen Amun Erenes was a grand Kandike ruler. In 24 BCE. The Romans, who had recently defeated Egypt, were demanding tribute from Cush, or they were going to destroy their city. Queen Amenoreus led an attack on the Roman forts on the Egyptian border. War lasted between the Romans and Cushites for three years before the Romans signed a peace treaty. And the, king, the kingdom of Cush lasted until 350 CE until they were invaded and defeated by attackers from Ethiopia. Please take a moment and highlight Kandike's queen mothers, considered goddesses, Queen Amenoreus, Kushites last until 350 CE, defeated attackers from Ethiopia. That is the end. I'm sorry for the two interruptions. And thank you for staying with us. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.